everybody. You're all just happy because you know we're almost near the end of the program. <laughs> I know my audience. It is great to be here with each and every one of you. I'm humbled and inspired and gratified that all of you took the time to be here. <laughs> Especially that section right there. Man. You guys are coming on the bus with me right after this. We're not done campaigning. Oh man, we got 24 more hours. Long Beach, we have 24 more hours to vote no on this Republican recall. 24 more hours to send a message, a big and powerful message. But let me start by just making a point because it needs to be said. I, I just heard the mayor speak and I couldn't be more proud of the mayor and remarkable U.S. Senator that I had the privilege of, you know, having a chance to appoint in Alex Padilla. And by the way, there, there, there's a rule in politics. Always have the person that appointed you introduce you. <laughs> and so I'm grateful uh, to the Senator for his introduction. But, but I want to make a point about Long Beach because I think about Long Beach, I think about L.A. County. I think about the state of California. I think about the energy that's here in this audience. <laughs> I may actually bring you after the election's over with me on the road. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> but I, I want to make this point. We're in Long Beach and I, we drove in with the president and we looked at all those remarkable people on the road. There are a lot more than you saw than the folks just out there celebrating the fact that President Biden is here in California. But I, but we're also celebrating the fact that we're in Long Beach, one of the most diverse cities in the most diverse county, LA County, in the most diverse state, California in the world's most diverse democracy, the United States of America. We celebrate our diversity in this city. We celebrate our diversity in this state. And at our best, we celebrate our diversity in the United States of America. What makes California great is that we can live together and advance together and prosper together across every conceivable difference. It's a remarkable thing. It really is. And, and I want you to all know that that issue, the issue of diversity, of pluralism, the issue that defines so much of our politics, that's all on the ballot tomorrow night. Racial justice is on the ballot tomorrow night. Economic justice is on the ballot tomorrow night. Social justice is on the ballot tomorrow night. Long Beach environmental justice is on the ballot tomorrow night. I just came back from Northern California. I had the privilege of being with the president and we took a flight in Marine One over Grizzly Flats, California. And any of you been paying any attention to what's going on in Northern California, a lot of folks all across the country are, are not surprised why we began the day up there. 2.2 million acres have already burned in the state of California so far this year. 7,400 fires. We currently have 13,000 personnel, firefighters, dozers, hand crews, 13,000 working 15 active wildfires right now. Four of the top 20 largest wildfires in California's history have occurred just in the last few months here in the state of California. The hots are getting a lot hotter, not just in this state, but around the globe. We just experienced the hottest summer in California's recorded history. And yet we still have people that are in complete denial that don't believe climate change is real. People that still call it a hoax. Larry Elder, who calls it a myth. 
Larry Elder, who says his solution to the climate issue is more offshore oil drilling off the coast of Long Beach. It's a remarkable moment in our state and nation's history. With all the progress we've made to define ourselves, not by our differences, but the things that bind us together, to be a majority minority state, California, to make the progress we have made over the course of the last number of decades to lead the nation in a series of issues. All of that is at risk if we don't turn out and vote no on this recall tomorrow. You've heard this. You've heard it from others. You, you heard not just from my cheering section over there. You've heard it. You, you've heard. You've heard it from others. Oh, I love Long Beach. I don't need to wind this crowd up for the president. <laughs> Long Beach. Long Beach. On the other side of this recall, on the other side of this recall, if we fall short, is someone that believes in no minimum wage. Someone believes there should be no corporate tax. Someone that believes we should privatize Social Security. Someone who believes we should cut Medicaid. Someone that believes that women don't have a constitutional right to choose. That is on the ballot. Think about this. We have someone on the other side of this ballot that thinks women are not as smart as men. He actually wrote an op-ed saying women aren't as smart in politics and civics and issues of economics. Tell my wife Jennifer Siebel Newsom that. Man. Thinks there's no glass ceiling. Doesn't believe in pay equity laws. Thinks women complain too much about sexism. Thinks minorities complain too much about racism. I don't know if you saw in the you can't make it up file. Did you see the video that just came out with Larry Elder? Reflecting on the fact that the state of California became the first state in the country to begin to explore the issue of reparations, he said, well, I'd be a little bit more cautious because he said, what about reparations? This is what Larry Elder said. He said, what about repar reparations for slave owners? This is 2021, and a candidate for governor of the state of California said that. Does it surprise, though, any of you that we have someone on the other side of this that's to the right of Donald Trump. <laughs> to the right of Donald Trump. Now we said this, Long Beach, we said this, and I, I, wanna, I wanna get to the main event and introduce you to the President of the United States, but I wanna just make a few final points. We said to you last year, we said this to you, we said every one of us said it to each other, and we all stepped up and we stepped in. We said the most important election in our lifetime, the most important and impactful election in our lifetime was defeating Donald Trump in 2020. And you did, we did. And I got proof coming here in a moment. President Joe Biden. But you saw what happened. You saw what had happened on election night. The big lie. You saw what happened a few months later, January 6th, in the insurrection. You've seen what's happened across this country in voter suppression all across the United States of America. You saw what happened in Texas and the fact that we have other Republican governors that hope to model that Texas legislation as it relates to denying women the right choice. We may have defeated Donald Trump, but we have not defeated Trumpism. Trumpism is still on the ballot in California, and that's why it's so important, not just for all of us here, 40 million Americans strong in the nation's largest and most populous state, 
but also to send a statement all across the United States of America that Trumpism has no place here and Trumpism will be defeated all across the United States of America because we're better than that. We're better than that as a nation. Start to focus on the things that unite us. Come together across our differences. Dr. King said it better than anyone else. We're all bound together by a web of mutuality. We're all better off when we're all better off. And that's the spirit that defines the Biden administration. That's the spirit that defines Democrats and our democratic principles and democratic values. Those are the principles. Those are the values we hold dear in the state of California. So Democrats, I'm asking you, knowing that you understand what's at stake. I'm asking you, nonetheless, to reconcile a fundamental fact. The future is not just something to experience. The future is something to manifest. The future doesn't just happen. You have to make it so. It's our decisions, not conditions, that determine our fate and future. So I'm asking you, over the course of the next 24 hours, to go out, to make phone calls, to send those text messages, to do the social media posts, to continue the door knocking, and continue to vocalize with all kind of energy that you have here tonight to vote no on this Republican recall. And with that powerful admonition, and with your voices united in opposition to this recall, let me ask you with that same level of intensity and purpose and passion to introduce, as I introduce, someone of character, of honor, of decency, someone that meets the moment and defines the dream. And as I introduce the President of the United States, I want to just remind you of this simple fact. There are two dreams. There's the American dream and the California dream. No other state in the United States attaches itself to the dream.